So we're going to get started because we have an, an hour to, to get in this. So in and out, you know, and if, if you are a pastor, anybody that speaks a lot, you know that an hour can go by really fast. OK, so we're going to try to hit it and, and then move on to the, to the next session. All right. Also, um, you know, I have my timer here. That's my wife. She's my she's my timekeeper, you know, to keep me on course. Um, so we're going to dive right into this. Is that OK? Yeah. OK. OK. Um, we're, we are going to pray, but you are in the desegregated life um, session. And um, our goal, you can go ahead and go to that next slide. I think, it, well, that's that's my information because we might not have a whole lot of time for questions. But if you want to email me and ask me a question, you, you can do that and, and I'll respond um, to the email. So I'll give you an opportunity if you want to, you know, kind of write that down. All right, let's go to our next slide. You know, so I want to uh, first start us off and, and let you know what we have access to as, as believers in Christ as this family, you know, that we have. You can go to this next slide. This, this, this particular scripture is so powerful to me and I want you to adopt this scripture because we have access to this as a family. Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope with God, without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. OK, just I'm going to pause there for a minute, you know, because we know that within this passage of scripture, Jews and Gentiles had a problem with one another. Right. You know, but I think I think this can apply and particularly um, in the area of blacks and whites relationship, because one of the things that I really sense, you know, I'm not saying that this is 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 God or whatever, but I look at black and white relationships as like parent relationships like the husband and the wife. Um, they're the like the primary relationship in the family. You know, and in, in, our, in, our, in our country, um, our country is dominated by African-Americans and white people, right? For the most part. And then you got a, a Hispanics, Asians, and so forth. So we're the dominant um, ethnicities within our country. Now, as that relates to a, a, a husband and a wife, when the husband and the wife is getting along, it creates a certain atmosphere in the family. You know, so I can't, I can't prove this, but this is just what God is kind of like putting on my heart, is that especially when blacks and whites get along, it creates a certain atmosphere in the country. And this is, this is I, I think this is very, very important because you've always had that tension there, right? You've always had that tension there, and it, it has created a climate within our country all right, that's causing the hostility within, you know, where we live. Can you identify with that a little bit? Okay, so here, you know, Jesus is saying that um, the Jews and the Gentiles, they've been brought near by the blood of Christ. This relationship that, that had the friction has been brought near by the blood of Christ. Let's go down, because I don't want to preach, and we want to keep going. For he himself is our peace. Okay. For he himself is our peace who has made both one. Okay. And then it says, and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Okay. Now this is going to get really good, I I'm believing. This is going to get really, really good here. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Have you heard that word abolitionist before? Yeah. All right. Jesus Christ came to in the separation. Oh my God. And, and when, we, when we submit to that, we'll see unity outside of an event that we have. 
Because because my church is multicultural, that doesn't mean that my church is multicultural. That's, right. <laughs> That's what I'm learning. Because we're in the same room, that don't mean that we're multicultural. We're just in the same room. You know, it's, it's almost like you go to an amusement park, park you have mission, many nationalities at an am, amusement park. But that's a, that doesn't mean that you have a relationship with everybody in the amusement park. All right? Okay? Y'all ready? Okay. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man. I just hear the heartbeat of God, and I probably can't quote that scripture, but I can see the heartbeat of God in, in this. God wants a family. He wants a family, right? From the two, thus making peace. All right, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. All right, you can go to that next slide. Thank you so much. Now, this is a dangerous prayer. We usually don't pray these type of prayers. <laughs> All right. David is like, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me. Oh, Lord Jesus. A spiritual CT scan. Right? And lead me in the way of everlasting. So I'm asking God, because as we were kind of going through this process at our church called Trenches Community Church, we were going through this book called One Blood, by John Perkins, and, you know, I'm the love guy. I call myself the love guy. And then as I'm going through this book, all of a sudden, God reveals to me something that I didn't see. And I was like, whoa, I didn't know that was in me, God. You know, so at times when we're studying God's word or we're in a workshop like this, all of a sudden God will shine some light on something that you didn't even know was there. But God never shines the light on something to hurt us. He shines the light on something to help us, right? You know, so I want us to pray that in your own way for about a minute, just like, Lord, search me in this workshop. So I'm going to give you a little time to do that. Amen. Next slide. Now, um, our goal is to help us adopt a more desegregated life, and we're going to explain that, a more desegregated life, and to help others do the same. You know, because being a pastor, you know, I don't know if we have any pastors in here, you know, you can preach a message and they're like, Pastor, I got that. All right. And my next response is, if you got it, give it to somebody else. <laughs> right? Oh, I'm solid on that, Pastor. Where if you're solid, all right, go spread what you're solid in. In other words, make disciples. All right. So it might be some people in here today like, man, I got that. Okay, if you got that, go make some more disciples like you because some other people need help, right? Okay, got it? So that's our goal. Let's go to the next slide. Why is this important? Let's go to the next slide. It's the Father's heart. So it doesn't matter what James says. <laughs> it, it really doesn't. It doesn't matter what Pastor Lee says. It, it doesn't matter what your leaders say. It, that all that matters is what is the Father saying? about this desegregated life. What is daddy saying? And we know that, first of all, God blessed Abraham and the nation of Israel to be a blessing, right? Um, and then Isaiah 49, it talks about that Israel was the light of the Gentiles. So God never created, okay, this this family, he didn't create it in a way that this family shouldn't share, all right, their privilege with other nations. He never set it up like that. 
what happened is the Jews, they became prideful in their privilege and they excluded the, the Gentiles. Is that the truth? Right. You know, so God, God, his mind was on all of humanity and the Gentiles. They developed this um, exclusive club called circumcision. Because <laughs> uncircumcision was not a term of, de- de- of endearment. Endearment. It wasn't a term like, no, they were putting people down. Right? So this is God's heart. He said, go make disciples of all nations. Right? You see the heart of God? Preach the gospel to every creature. Right? From one blood, every nation of men, all nations and revelations, all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues. All right? And then Jesus prayed that all of us would be one. See? We, we, are, we are a family, whether you believe it or not. And, and as a family, we need to become closer, right? And we're, we're going to help with that. Because I'm still trying to wrap my mind around Jesus' prayer that if they're one, the world will believe. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around that. So this thing is so much bigger than James. It's not about James being glorified. It's about the Father being glorified, all right, and the world being impacted, all right, by Jesus being sent into the world. So that's my goal is, God, I just I want to see you glorified. It's not about trenches. It's not about me. It's not about necessarily relationships that I have. It's about are you highlighted in what we're doing? Because if you're not highlighted, what are we doing? <laughs> if you're not highlighted, what is the church doing? What am I doing? So this is the Father's heart. Let's go to the next one. Two minutes left on this. So desegregated is the process of ending the separation of two groups, usually referring to race. Okay, usually referring um, to race. And then lifestyle, I think all of us know this definition, the way you live. Okay, this is the way you live. These, these are your daily practices, your culture, all right, the customs, that your habits, your ways, right? So putting those two together, I came up with a desegregated lifestyle, which is in our next slide. A desegregated lifestyle to me is a multicultural, multi-ethnic way of living, which includes listening to, learning from, okay, doing life with, and loving authentically one from a different culture or ethnicity. Okay, you got that? Thank you. I I tell the people at Trenches, I I need to hear stuff like that because my love language is affirmation. (laughs) So y'all can either say that's good or you can say amen. All right, that makes me feel real good. I could, okay, they, they engaged and so, so that's my love language is words of affirmation. And then also quality time, you know, spending a lot of time with my wifey for lifey over there. Okay, now let's go. I, I wanna show you this video that we put together at Trenches and it's, it's so powerful to me um, because Trenches Community Church, we're trying to become more intentional at um, becoming a multicultural, multi-ethnic yeah. church. We're, we're leaning into this. So again, I just wanna just show you this real quick. So that's a little video that, that we put, to, put together, you know, um, as a local assembly, you know, and usually when I put stuff online, you know, it, it might get like 50 hits. You know, this got over like 3,000 hits, and I was, I was just so proud of it, you know. So I wanted to share it with you guys, you know, because I, I, I'm really trying to, to set it up first so that you can kind of see that, um, you, yeah, Haley, Haley, 
<laughs> Haley, you, Haley, you like that video, huh? <laughs> okay, so um, if you guys want to check that out again, you can go on YouTube and type in Trenches Community Church. You know, so I, I want to um, try to create this foundation that, you know, a, a lot of times when, you know, pastors might teach messages, you know, and I hope I don't step on any toes, is that the, the, the message is something that they put together for the people. <laughs> but the, the message, they really haven't experienced it. So I really want to, I'm, I'm teaching you this because I've experienced this. This ain't something like, oh man, let, let me see. Yeah, this is what we need in our world. Let me go ahead and teach it. No, this is, this is my life. This is, this is what I, I'm living. And so it works. A desegregated life works. Right? You know, I have, so go to that next slide for me, please. That's a nice bridge. <laughs> so, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Haley was asking me, before the session, she was like, do you want to run your PowerPoint? I was like, nope, because if something goes wrong, all right, they're going to look at me, so I'm going to blame, we're going to blame Haley. <laughs> so all the pressure is on Haley today, right? So now I can look at her the way I be looking at the people at the church when they be messing up the PowerPoint. I'm like, okay, come on, put the video on, please. All right. So, um... We getting there? Thank you so much. Um, I have these um, these friendships like in my in my life, and and it's it's a part of my my narrative. Um, you know, I have a friend by the name of Rob Link. He pastors at the river downtown. And I remember Rob Link asked me, did I want to go like camping with him? And I was like, where are you going camping at? He was like, Yellowstone Park. I was like, okay. Um, like what type of camping, a pop-up tent or like raw camping? He was like, yeah, like raw. I was like, what do you, what do you, what do you do? What's, what's going on? Like, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm out there by myself. And I was like, so do you be seeing wildlife? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And I was like, I love wildlife. Like, what type of wildlife you see? He was like, grizzlies and things like that. And I was like, I was like, bruh, <laughs> black people <laughs> don't go camping to see grizzlies. And, and he kept asking me, and then finally, and finally, I decided that I'm going to go camping with Rob Link. And so he took, a, took me up to Pitchard Rock in, in Michigan, beautiful place, okay? And I'm so thankful that I went because I changed my cultural narrative. So now I, I, I see God in Rob Link like I've never seen God before because I spent time with Rob Link at Pitchard Rock. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go through some of these pictures real quick. Are we there? That is, man. That's not Pitchard Rock, but that's, that was really nice. All right, so um, one time, you know, Rob had on, um, uh, uh, yeah, Rob had on a kilt <laughs> while we was, well, we was camping. And you know, like, in my neighborhood, and this is what me and Rob went back and forth with. In my neighborhood, Rob, that's a skirt. He was like, James, no, that's a kilt. I was like, no, it's a skirt. I was like, if you want to wear a kilt, go ahead and wear a kilt. I'm never wearing a kilt. You know, but these type of um, occasions Man, has caused me to just fall in love with this dude. Because Rob doesn't have to be like me. 
And I want to encourage you, you, you just be you. <laughs> and that's, this is what we do. You know, at times, if a person is not like us and they don't fit in, then we can't celebrate the person. <laughs> I, got a, I got a guy, I got a guy at our church, he just started um, playing the, the keyboard for us. He's a Caucasian brother, and this dude is as quiet as all get out. I mean, right, right, Tammy? You, it's barely that you can get three words out of him in three weeks. You know, but I told Jack, his name is Jack. I was like, Jack, just be you, man. We want to celebrate and respect you. You know, you bring something that we didn't have before, and that's you, right? So, so God wants us to, God wants us to um, celebrate one another, you know, as we do this, this desegregated life. Are we, are we good? Because you know I'm kind of winging it. <laughs> we kind of, uh, let me uh, see something here. All right. What's my next part? Uh -oh, I really got to preach now. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, just go ahead and, um, yeah. Yeah, let's do the pictures. Play. There we go. Thank you. All right, yes, yes. So, so go back a little bit. Now we really got to. Okay, so do you guys know him? Nate Roosh? Yeah. Ever heard of Nate? You know, so, so again, this narrative piece is that I met Nate last year here at the conference, and then me and Nate, we started talking about University of Michigan football, and then he was like, man, let's go to a football game. You know, he was like, I have season tickets. And then all of a sudden, you know, we leaned into this and we ended up at Michigan Stadium and I had always wanted to go to the big house. I drove by the big house, but I have never been in the big house. So this is me and Nate at the big house together. Okay, and, and Nate just recently sp um, spoke at um, Radiant and then we went out again when he came here. And this is this, is this desegregated lifestyle that I'm talking about. It's like doing, doing life with people, you know, learning, learning people, and specifically because, again, within our demographics here in Kalamazoo, you know, I want to focus more on the African-American and Caucasian relationship. You know, I think that that's just so huge, and I'll say this, that's very challenging. And, and this is what um, Lee was talking about, is that God wants to press us so we can experience the oil. And we're so used to being comfortable, and he's trying to press us. And I believe this, guys, okay, this is just my belief, is that part of this great revival is going to be when the church walks out this desegregated life. All right, that's just my thinking. That's what I'm praying into. So you got all of these different relationships. These are guys over at, at the house, um, you know, some of the men. We call this guy the mayor of, of the area we live in. He runs everything, but he's not really the mayor, you know. So, you know, and then here, this is my bas high school basketball team. You know, I had hair back then, you know. This is a team of people. We went to Africa together, you know, and I have some of those people um, here, here today. Let's go to the next slide. Um, you know, Jesus Loves Kalamazoo, you guys probably heard of that. That's a powerful movement that's happening here. Uh, uh, again, kayaking, you know, black people don't do that, but since we, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, we went to the Kaisers. We have um, Julie Kaiser, you know, here today. This is a Hispanic church. This is a wedding I went to of two individuals. Um, Carly, she calls me her, her spiritual dad, you know, and so forth. Let's go to the next you know, so we can speed this up a little bit. This is Jeff Port. You know, he pastors at Center Point Church. Me and him, we're cool. These are the Stones, our friends. Again, these is JLK at our house. You know, this is Rob right here. This is Rob Link. He's tatted up from neck down. Okay. You know, but that's my guy right there. I love that brother. You know, so that, this is some of my, you know, some of my story. 
you know, and, and these relationships that I have, I can truly say from, uh, uh, from my heart that I love these people. I, I love these people. It's, it's, not, it's not surface, it's deep. Okay, right? And this is what, you know, if you, you're not experiencing this, this is what I want to push you into. If you are experiencing this already, God wants to push you to, to share it with other people. All right, let's go to the next slide. Y'all feeling the Holy Spirit up here? Just, just go down, just keep going. We're a little behind. Now we, we want to talk about, start moving into, okay, how do we do this? All right. I, I love Galatians 2.20. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live it by faith, all right? In him who loved me and gave himself for me. Pastor, how does this look? Let's go to the next slide. This, this cross, so um, because we're kind of running out of time here, is, see, all of us have come to the cross, Right. We've had an encounter, you know, with the cross. In other words, we've been recipients of what Christ has done. So the way that I want to demonstrate this is like I've been a recipient of love. Right. How many of you guys have been a recipient of God's love? So not only have I been a recipient of God's love, now I'm a representative of God's love. Right. So I'm coming to the cross and I'm dying to myself. I'm denying myself. So so now I've received love and now I give love. Right. And it's, it, it, again, it's about this this family. You know, how I many of you guys love your body? That might be a dangerous question. <laughs> These days, some people have problems. They're biological families. But I, don't raise your hands on this. But, but how many of you guys just love your biological family? My mom, she came up yesterday from the Detroit area, and I was so happy, you know, to see my mom. You know, and every time my mom comes to trenches, I acknowledge my mom in front of the whole congregation. Every time, because that's the lady that birthed me into the earth. And she took care of me. And I love my mom, Okay. But I also want that same type of love that I have for my mom, I want that same type of love to be extended to you as my brothers and sisters in Christ. And this is how we live this desegregated life is that, again, we're leaning into this love. We're leaning into actually listening to one another like, and learning from one another, right, and doing life with one another, maybe going camping. Maybe after this, somebody might invite me to go camping again somewhere. I don't know. You know, but that's how you, that's how you, you Christ breaks down these barriers. The barriers are not broken down in an event. I'm, I'm, I'm just, let, it's, it's about relationship. Right? So, we've experienced this love. I've, I've, I've experienced and a recipient of reconciliation. So now I'm a representative of reconciliation, right? So it's almost like we have to give what we've received and we have to, to represent Christ in that. And then I, I'm a recipient of life. So now, okay, James is dead and, and now how could I say this? Christ is at the forefront of everything that I do. Because guys, again, when I was growing up is, I grew up in the Detroit area, and in our neighborhood, we had to walk through an all white neighborhood. And, and we gathered together at, at, at like um, um, this corner in our neighborhood, and we walked together in, in groups. Because at that time, Okay, the racism was heightened. Um, the, the schools were becoming segregated. Um, um, 
desegregated, and, 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 and it was, it was in a uh, tense time, and we had to walk through, and man, there were many times that we walked through and we were called the N-word, okay? We were chased and, and so forth. And, and that, could have, that could have been like engraved in my soul, but it wasn't. And I think that God graced me to not become bitter because he wanted me to stand before you today. So I really don't have a side. I have a Christ side, right? So I can come in a group like this, and I can, I can guarantee you're feeling the passion and the love for the body of Christ because that's authentic and that's genuine because of my narrative. So James Harris, hey, I'm dead. Christ is at the forefront. James Harris is behind. And just like I said in the beginning, if, if you're not seeing Christ in me, James needs to get out of the way because James will mess things up, right? And at times, we'll be in the forefront and not Christ being in the front forefront and we'll mess things up, okay? So, so you got this life and then you have peace. You got peace. I'm a recipient, so I'm a peace guy. You know, if, if, if we're not at peace with one another, I'll do everything that I can to make it right, right? If there's separation in the body of Christ, I'm going to do everything to make it right. Have you ever thought about this? I'm going to throw this out to you. It's like Jesus prayed that the church would be one. And we saw the heart of God, right, in the scriptures. Have you ever thought about this like why do we still have, like, predominantly white churches over here, predominantly black churches over here, predominantly uh, Asian churches over here? Why, why is that still like that? And Jesus prayed it in his God's heart. Why is that still happening? Comfy. And I call it this. Y'all probably going to throw rocks at me when I say this one. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> And I gave you small ones too. I didn't give you, I didn't give you stones, right? Again, this is my processing. Have we set ourselves in the body of Christ? What does that mean? Because if God sets the members in the body of Christ that is pleased him, has God set up the white churches to be over here, the black churches to be over there, and the Hispanic churches to be over there? I don't think so. I think that we've created that. I'm going to let that one sit there for a little bit. Is that the truth? All right. All right. So we have to operate through this cross if we're going to live this desegregated lifestyle, we, get, we have to. Okay, let's go to the next slide because we're running out of time here. Okay, let's apply now. Let's go to the next one. Now, in Acts chapter 10 and 11, um, this issue between the Jews and the Gentiles was still existing. Right? So you had Peter, who was a Jew, then you had Cornelius, who was a Gentile, right? And the Gentile, Cornelius, was actually praying to God before he even got saved, okay? And I remember my wife saying this, that she, was, she prayed to God a lot before she got saved. So this Gentile was praying and then Peter was also praying, and I'm, I'm wondering, like, what was Peter praying? <laughs> How many of you guys have ever prayed a prayer that, you know, I'm praying this prayer, but I, I really don't know the magnitude of this prayer that I'm praying? And all of us have prayed, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, really? Because according to Revelation 7, 9, heaven looks totally different 
than most of our lifestyles or our church. So some of us might want to stop praying, your kingdom come, your will be done. Because this is what we do with God. Okay, God, I'm praying this prayer, but this is the way I want it set up. I really don't want to submit to the way you got it set up. Because the way that I want to set it up is going to be comfortable for me. But when Jesus comes, he breaks down all the comfort, right? And he causes us to become who he has called us to be and, and what he's called us to do, okay? So you got this, you, you got this, this relationship in Acts. Now, the way that we do this, we got to embrace the moment, I'm feeling this. We got to embrace the moment. God is speaking. Are we going to be like Israel and rebel against the voice of God? God is speaking. I'm all the way in Africa, going to Africa. See a pastor in the, in the, in the, um, the airport, and God tells me to go over to the pastor and kind of like get to know him. And then all of a sudden, long story short, I was like, Pastor, what do you believe God is saying? He was, in, uh, he was from Nairobi. I was like, what do you think God is saying to the body of Christ? You know what he said? Unity. And I walk away from this guy. I'm like, God, you are speaking. And the church and, 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 and us as individuals, we have to embrace the moment. Yes. Yes. Take hold of what God is saying. Okay? And we're, we're praying and we're believing God for revival. But guys, let me let you know something. Let me let you in on a little secret. Revival is not going to look the way that you think it's going to look. Because if you have it all mapped out, okay, God just needs to get out of the way then. It's, it's not going to look anything the way that you think it's going to look. Okay? So we want to embrace the moment. So in this, let's go to the next slide. Um, yeah, I talked about that. Go to the next one. Peter had an encounter with God. And then Cornelius had an encounter with God. Okay, now remember, Jews and Gentiles, they were separate. And both of them had an encounter with God. And this is one lesson that I'm learning, is that we'll narrow the encounter with God down to like, man, when we went to this worship service, God moved. Or when I was studying the word, man, whew, the Holy Spirit breathed on me, right? But I want to push you to experiencing an encounter with God a different way. I experience an encounter with God, the presence of God, when I cross, all right, my ethnic boundaries and I get to know someone, all right, who is created in the image of God. And then I have this moment like, whoa, I didn't know that was in Lydia to dance the way she was dancing over in Africa. Okay, but now that Lydia is being her, I see God in her and now I go like, whoa, God, that's beautiful. See, so they had, this, they had this encounter with God that was starting to bring them together. Let's go to the next one. So we want to embrace the encounter. The next thing you want to do, you want to embrace the voice. And we talked about this. Embrace the voice. See, God is already talking to people in here. Yeah. Grab a hold of that. Lean in. Lean into that voice. He's, he's speaking. God's voice should be higher, all right, or louder than any other voice in your life, including the voice of your traditions. Because we have some traditions that make the power of God of no effect. Come on, y'all. And, and if you read in Acts chapter 10 and, and 11... God actually had to talk to Peter three times to break <laughs> the tradition. 
right? Let's go to the next one. So we want to embrace his voice. You want to embrace the yes. Because as you read in there, Peter was like, God, I ain't never, ever, ever ate, all right, animals with hoofs and things like that. That's not part of my Jewish tradition. So God had to keep talking to him, and then finally he embraced the, the yes in t- instead of call- saying this, not so, Lord. <laughs> So God, I know you want me to live a desegregated lifestyle, but. And God is like, get rid of the but and embrace the yes. Now I'm going to show you at the end of this how revival came. Let's go to the next one. All right. Embrace hospitality. And, and, and break, lean, lean into it. Because when the, the, uh, the Gentile came to Peter's house, okay, the Bible says that Peter lodged them. <laughs> in other words, he accepted them into his home, all right, and they slept over. Now, that's amazing because when Peter goes to Cornelius' house, he was like, it's unlawful. <laughs> Y'all feel? He said it's unlawful, all right, for a Jew to associate with a Gentile. In, in other words, in my tradition, in my culture, that's a crime. So in order for, all right, uh, Peter to allow the Gentiles into his house, something was broke. Something was broken there, and they became hospitable. He became hospitable to the individual, all right, who was different than his nation, right? I have people here today. I've been over their house. They've been to my house. We've ate at their house. They've eaten over at my house, all right? We've, been, we've done things together, right? We're hospitable. You know, I want to challenge us in something also, is, and, and I'm, I'm learning, all of us are in the, this same boat together, but I want to challenge you guys something. When, when you go to a conference, okay, or a place, and you see someone, all right, who is the minority, and they're already feeling uncomfortable, okay, and you sit next to them, say something. <laughs> Don't just play like the person is not there. Say something. Extend, I mean, embrace the hospitality. You know, because I've been in situations, and I've talked to Lee about this, you know, because I come over to the pastor's meetings uh, monthly or quarterly now, and I was like, Pastor Lee, man, sometimes I come to the staff meetings, I just feel totally out of place. Right? Right? Because I, at times I feel like the hospitality is not extended. And that's real. You know, at times we don't want to have these tough conversations, but that's not going to stop me from going to the pastor's meetings. Okay, I'm going to keep going, right, because I believe in a desegregated lifestyle. And I love Pastor Lee. And we're, we're learning to love one another. Okay. You know, so embrace the hospitality. Let's go to the next one because we got to get there. Hurry up. Embrace truth. I'm going to throw this out here. Okay. God's truth became more real to Peter than his tradition. I have some traditions as an African-American, but if my tradition doesn't line up with the truth, get rid of it. (laughs) And our upbringings and things like that, if it don't line up with the truth, if you want to experience this desegregated lifestyle, get rid of it. Okay, let's hurry up. We got to roll. Humility. Okay, embrace humility. Embrace it. When when Peter went to Cornelius' house, you know what Cornelius did? The thing that Cornelius first did is that he bowed, right, to Peter. 
And Peter said this. This is so powerful. He was like, man, get up off your knees. I'm a man just like you. What happened there? Okay, Peter had this, this, this mentality of superiority over a Gentile. Right. He's had this encounter. God has changed his life. All right. And he 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 had this encounter with the Gentile. And then he saw the Gentile as equal to him. Not below him. So he became humble. I'm a man just like you. So get up. Right. So we have to embrace being humble before God and humble before one another. Right. Let's go to the next one. We got to hurry up. All right. Now embrace the revival. And I know that Pastor Lee talked about this in the, in the main session. Through all of this, guys, what happened? The Holy Spirit showed up. Read it. In Acts chapter 10, the Holy Spirit showed up. Cornelius' whole family got saved. And everybody in the household got saved. The Holy Spirit came. They started speaking in tongues. And also baptism took place. Now you tell me that's not revival. But Jesus had to break down the barriers first in order for that to happen. So we, we smell the rain in our city. Okay? And, and Pastor Lee said this also. Guys, in order for revival to happen, God has to revive us first. And I can guarantee you, you live, live this desegregated lifestyle, you're going to experience the presence of God in your city, in your home, like you've never experienced it before. Because this is one of the things that God is saying to his church, get it together. Get it together. All right? And we are going to get it together. That's why you guys came to this session, because you want to get it together, right? All right? Now, I'm going to give you a 10-minute test, you know, because remember, we, we prayed in the beginning like, Lord, search my heart. So we're going to give God an opportunity to search your heart a little bit more before you leave. So you got these rocks. Pull your rocks out. <sighs> Guys getting something out of this yet? Yeah. Okay. All right. We, we had two people that, that said yes. <laughs> Okay. All right. Now you should have uh, your rock should look like this. It should be two separate bags, two different. Okay. Okay. Now I, I don't have any clue of how this is going to go. So I'm like, Lord Jesus, help us. This is the first time I've ever done this. Okay. Okay. Now. This bag of rocks right here, this represents white people. Okay. This bag right here, all right, this represents people of color. All right? Got it? Yeah. Now, now what we want to do is just give you a test, all right, to see how multicultural and multi-ethnic your life is. Not your church, but your life. Because I believe that if your life represents that, then your church will be a reflection of your life. Okay, y'all ready? Okay, here come the Holy Spirit. <laughs> about to breathe on you. you. You got about to get filled, okay? All right. First question. Now, if, yeah, just this is assessment. This is not the question, you know. Um, but yeah, go to the, go, go back up where you were. Yeah. So I want you to just be thinking about this before we do it. How are you willing to engage another cultural or ethnic narrative outside of your own? Okay. That's going to, that's going to be, Hey, I'm, I'm going to explain it. Yeah, we're, for, for, this, for this session, just like we said, because that's the predominant ethnicities within, you know, the Kalamazoo area, and you might live somewhere else, you know, we're going to do the black-white thing, okay? Is that, is that cool? Yeah. I know that's uncomfortable. It's, it's, un, it's uncomfortable for me, too. I know it's uncomfortable. We're going to go where the Holy Spirit is leading us, all right? So um, 
As I go through these questions, if you are an African American or a person, you know, of color, okay, you're going to be digging into your white rock bag and putting rocks within your cultural context. Got that? Okay. If you are Caucasian, all right, you're going to be grabbing the the, uh, the, the colored bag, right? And then you're going to be putting those rocks into your um, cultural context. Okay, got that? Okay, I had a hand up. Yes, ma'am. I, I knew that was going to happen. Yes. Like I said, this is, this is the first time, so we're learning. So next time I'm going to know what if you're mixed. All right, so let's go to the first one. All right. Have you had breakfast, lunch, or dinner with someone of another ethnicity in the past six months to a year? If so, just choose one of those rocks and put it in your cultural context. Got it? Okay. Next question. Have you been at the home of someone of a different ethnicity or they've been to your home in the past six months to a year? Okay, yeah, just put them in your rock. Y'all don't be saying yes and all of that. Because like, yeah. one thing that we don't want to do, if, if, if our context looks multicultural, multi-ethnic, we don't want to become prideful in that. All right, okay, we want to stay humble. All right, next question. Um, is that, that's the next one? Okay, have you visited another church, attended a conference or workshop led by someone of a different ethnicity in the past six months to a year? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next one. Do you have someone you consider a friend? Someone you talk with on a regular basis of a different ethnicity? And particularly, I should have said this in the beginning, particularly, you know, African American or Caucasian. But um, we'll just keep it moving. Next one. Do you listen to um, worship music of a different ethnicity? Next one. Do you frequent read books written by an author of a different ethnicity? I hear rocks exchanging, boy. Yes, that's what's up. Next one. Do you attend movies or stage plays written uh, or directed by someone of a different ethnicity? That's... <laughs> Next one. Woo. Do you have pictures in your phone of you and someone of a different ethnicity? Next one. Does your social media have pictures of you and others of a different ethnicity? Next question. Have you had the race or injustice conversation with an African American or someone um, of European descent? And think this is the last one. Is that it? Oh. Do you promote your children to engage others of a different ethnicity? Is, is, that, is that it? Because I forgot how. Now, what you want to do is we don't necessarily want to see your bag <laughs> or your baggage. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we don't want to see your bag. What you want to do is you want to take your bag and you want to talk to God about your bag. If, if your bag is multicultural, multi-ethnic, you know, man, we, we celebrate it, share that with others. Is, if it's not, then you want to ask God, how come my bag doesn't look like that? And allow the Father to talk to you in that area, all right? Because he has a way of saying things to you that I can't. You know, he knows where you are and what you need and how you need to grow. Amen. All right. So again, guys, you can you can email me, you know, any, you know, death threats, uh, <laughs> encouragement, you know, whatever questions and so forth, you know, and I'll try to um, lean in and help you with that. All right.